Gun Maverick is the sequel to the original Top Gun that came out 30 years ago. And I did not know, I had heard about the movie, didn't know much about it, so I had to go on Netflix, go find the original so that I could watch it and be up to date with what was going on. So Top Gun Maverick stars Tom Cruise as Captain Pete Maverick Mitchell, a US Navy test pilot. And as his name suggests, Maverick is restless, uh, reckless, excuse me, reckless but is one of the best. And so he is assigned, as you saw in the, um, in the video, to teach um, a, a group of pilots who are elite pilots. They are called the Super Hornet Aviators, and it's to help them conduct an urgent mission in foreign hostile territory. Now, there's a lot going on in the movie and personal dynamics, which I will save for you to go see the movie for yourself. But one of the things that stuck out to me was Maverick's assignment to teach this elite group of aviators how to carry out their mission. And he has three weeks to do it. And while the government isn't as concerned about their safety, Maverick, because of a background story, is careful to make sure that the mission is not only successful, but that the aviators survive. And so for him, he takes teaching these pilots extremely seriously. But in true Maverick fashion, he realizes that what they need is not book knowledge. They know that already. The training needs to become so much a part of them that they can carry out the mission and make whatever contingencies they need to make in the moment instinctively. They, think, they can't think about it. They have to just do it. And they have to believe that they can do it. Now, in many ways, Maverick's approach reminded me of Jesus with the disciples. Not three weeks, but Jesus had three years to teach his disciples how to carry out their mission. And while Jesus teaches and preaches, Jesus knows that the disciples will only learn best through their lived experiences with him. They know the book, the law. Now they have to learn how to live it out in a way that honors God. I believe Jesus is teaching the disciples and he wants to teach us how to have what I'd like to call maverick faith. Now the word maverick has two major meanings. One is an unbranded calf or cow, but it also means a person who's a lone dissenter, who takes an independent stand apart from his or her associates. But dictionary.com also recognizes that the term maverick has changed so much over time in common usage that it can mean a person who is wild and potentially reckless, that they are a loose cannon. In many ways, the disciple Peter is a maverick. He's a bit of a loose cannon. If you recall, he's the one who blurts out whatever he's thinking, and, and sometimes he's right, but sometimes he's terribly wrong. He practically swears that he will never abandon Jesus, and yet he denies Jesus three times when Jesus is arrested. But Peter is also the one who, when the Roman soldiers come to take Jesus, Peter pulls out a sword and slices his ear off. Peter is the one that you want to have with you when things go down. He's reckless. He's a loose cannon. But, Ju but Jesus chooses him anyway and uses his recklessness. So shout out to all of you who've been called reckless or mavericks in your life. And it's this maverick streak in Peter that allows him to experience something with Jesus that no one else does. Even though there may be many of us who live in our comfort zones, today we can, can we consider how God wants to push us to have maverick faith? God is pushing us to have maverick faith. So what do I mean by maverick faith? Here's my definition. Maverick faith is faith so focused on Jesus that you do what seems unconventional or impossible. Some might even call it reckless simply because God is calling you to do it. A faith so focused on Jesus that you do what seems unconventional or impossible, some might even call it reckless because God is calling you to do so. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew chapter 14. It's a very familiar passage. Matthew 14, verses 22 through 33. Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, 
and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind and was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshiped, saying, truly you are the son of God. Now, Jesus had been preaching and teaching and healing and performing all kinds of amazing acts and signs, and the disciples had been with him every step of the way. In fact, right before this story, we see Jesus feeding the 5,000, and the disciples were there and a part of it. And so Jesus sends the disciples ahead of him while he prays. And as you would expect, the, the boat is moving along the lake during the night, but the winds and the waves are terrible, and they're knocking the boat about. And early in the morning, and depending on which version of the Bible you, say, you read, it says during the third watch. And the third watch is sometime between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. Jesus goes out walking on water towards the disciples. Now seeing it, Peter dares to believe that he can walk on water too. He asked Jesus to call out to him, and Jesus does, and Peter begins to walk toward him on the water. But then Peter notices the wind, and he becomes afraid, and he begins to sink. He cries out to Jesus, and Jesus reaches out to him, and together they make their way back to the boat. Now, if we pay attention to what Peter is doing, we realize that Peter demonstrates maverick faith. Peter shows us how to have maverick faith. Number one, first, to have maverick faith, you have to do what Jesus does. Do what Jesus does. Look at verses 22 through 29. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get out of the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Peter saw what Jesus was doing and asked that he be able to do it too. Now, a better interpretation of, 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 a better interpretation of verse 28 is, since it is you, please enable me to do the same thing you are doing. Peter understood, even if it was subconsciously, that there was more to experience about Jesus, and that is why he takes this initiative. People with maverick faith, they study the word of God to see what God is doing. They pay attention to the world around them to see where God is at work, and they ask to join in. They ask God to let them do what he is doing. The three years that Jesus spent with the disciples was for them to be able to see and experience what Jesus was doing firsthand. Jesus then empowers them to do the things that he does. By learning from Jesus, the disciples become able to heal and to cast demons out of people. In the book of Acts, we even see Paul raise someone back to life, just like Jesus. In the movie, Tom Cruise's character, Maverick, has come up with a plan to complete their dangerous assigned mission. The plan, though, is equally dangerous as well. It means flying the plane at their highest speeds, maneuvering through these windy canyons and flying lower than what regulations allow so that the planes are undetected by the enemy. Now, if they complete the mission, they still run the risk of dying because they have to get out of the canyon at the highest speed possible. And they run the risk of dying under the pressure of all of that speed against their bodies. 
This elite group of aviators, they want to fly this mission, but they also understand the risk. And it is that hesitancy that can get them killed. So to build their confidence and to prove that his plan is the best, Maverick simulates the flight for them so that they can see that it can be done. Once they see that it can be accomplished, they are even more eager to be chosen to fly the mission. They saw that it could be done, and so they believed that they could do it, and they wanted to do it. Peter sees that Jesus is walking on water, and he believes that he can do it too with Jesus' permission. Peter reacted in faith to what he saw Jesus do. Peter believes that if Jesus can walk on water, so much so that if God calls him, he can do it too. Peter's is a true boldness of faith that, as one theologian put it, knows and trusts that even natural impossibilities, they yield before the, the will, the word, and the power of Jesus Christ. It is impossible for a human to walk on water. It's not impossible when Jesus calls you and empowers you to do so. There are so many things that seem impossible until we ask God to give us the power to do so. So often we as Christians say we want to grow in our faith. We want to be more like Jesus. We want to have spiritual authority. But if we want these things, we need to have maverick faith. We need to have the boldness to ask Jesus to allow us to do what he is doing. Ask him to make your prayers more effective. Ask him to give you the power to heal. Ask him to give you a more forgiving heart. Ask him to give you a greater capacity to love. And these gifts are, are not for selfish gain, but so that the mission of Jesus can be accomplished in the world. And here's the thing. We can't just ask Jesus for these things. We have to actually be willing to do it. Peter didn't just ask to be called out to the water. He was willing to go. The hard work of faith is not thinking about what Jesus is doing, but actually doing it. Last year, if you recall, we went through the Soul Care series. And Pastor Peter told us leaders and pastors to practice to doing the work of soul care with one another. He told us to practice listening for the Holy Spirit for one another and to practice deliverance on one another. His point, you can't develop your spiritual authority or sharpen your ear for the Holy Spirit in theory alone. You have to practice it. You have to do it. Too many of us sit on the sidelines of our faith knowing in theory what to do, but not actually having the maverick faith to do it. There were 12 disciples on that boat, but only one walked on water. The other disciples had the same opportunity to do it as well, but they didn't. They were all disciples of Jesus Christ, and they had spent more or less the same amount of time together, yet only Peter asked to, be co to come out. And even if Peter was the first to ask, the others could have said, me too, me too, but they didn't. They sat on the sidelines wondering what it was like to walk on water. John Ortberg, in his book, If You Want to Walk on Water, You Have to Get Out of Boat, he calls them boat potatoes. You get it? Like couch potatoes, boat potatoes. They sit on the sidelines, not wanting to get out of the boat. Those of you wanting maverick faith have to be okay going it alone even among other believers. Not everyone in your group of friends or your community group is going to be as committed to prayer or fasting or obedience or Bible reading or serving as you are. Do it anyway. Have the faith in Christ to ask him to call you out to deep waters, to walk on water and to go. Peter personally experienced an incredible display of God's power in him because he stepped out on faith out of the boat. He saw what Jesus was doing and he did it, even though he was the only one. So to have maverick faith, we need to do what Jesus does. Second, we need to focus on Jesus. Focus on Jesus. Look at verses 28 through 31. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got, out of, got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. 
But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? Look at the sequence of events. Peter asked Jesus to allow him to walk on water. Jesus says, come. Peter gets out of the boat and he walks on water. Jesus gives him the power to do exactly the thing that he asked to do. Peter walks on water, but here's where things shifted. If you have your Bible, or if you're taking notes, I want you to uh, write down these three steps from verse 30, or these three actions rather, from verse 30. Number one, Peter saw the wind. Number two, Peter was afraid. Number three, Peter began to sink. Did you notice that? Peter's fear only crept in when he began paying attention to the wind, when his eyes and his mind shifted off of Jesus. Peter had already been walking on water. He was already doing the thing that he asked Jesus to allow him to do. But he took his focus off of Jesus and placed it on the wind. Now, I don't have really great balance. And there are some exercises that I want to do, but I have a really hard time doing them. And one of them is called the one-legged Romanian deadlift, one-legged RDL. It's essentially when you balance on one leg and lift the other leg while you're holding a weight moving down the front of your legs. If you want to see it done correctly, ask Pastor Doug. But one of the ways they tell you to maintain your balance is to focus, pick a focal spot and focus on it and keep your eyes there even as you are moving. Jesus is our focal spot. When the wind is swirling all around us and we feel like we're losing our balance, we need to focus on our focal spot. We need to keep our eyes on Jesus. Peter's faith and focus on Jesus made the water unnoticeable underneath his feet. But when he focused on the wind around him, the water became too much to bear. If Peter would have remained focused on Jesus, his faith would have remained intact and he would not have begun to sink. Fright struck Peter when he looked at what was threatening all around him. He was now out of the safety of the boat and he's exposed to the elements and, and, and the wind is blowing around him and the waves are crashing around him. This is where his faith gave way to fear. He looked at the wind and the waves and he forgot that Jesus was right in front of him. When fear overtakes you, logic ceases. Jesus was right there before him, and Peter is an experienced fisherman. He can swim. But none of that mattered in the moment of fear. Things around us are real, but when we look at them, we are immediately overwhelmed, and, and we're unable to recognize Jesus. This is where doubt enters in. Jesus says, you of little faith. And he's not rebuking Peter, it's, it's a reminder, it's a gentle way of pointing out to Peter of what caused his trouble. Too little faith when he looked at the wind and the waves. Doubt crowded out his faith at the thought of danger. Keep your focus on Jesus. The root word for doubt that is used here in this verse in Greek is actually the word double. The, the root word is double, as in double-minded. It suggests the idea of two different directions or, or serving two masters simultaneously. There are two different things happening in Peter's mind. There's faith and there's doubt. Have you ever felt that way? Jesus asked the question, why did you doubt? If you look at the New Living Translation, they have a much cleaner translation. It says, not why did you doubt, but why did you doubt me? The question is not about doubt in general, but it's about doubt of a specific person, of Jesus. Why did you doubt me, Jesus says. Jesus is saying, I'm right here. Why would you doubt that I would keep you safe? Why would you doubt that I would be with you? Doubt can also creep in when we overthink things. In the movie Maverick, the character, uh, excuse me, in the movie, 
Maverick tells the character Rooster, who always likes to play it safe, he says, don't think, do. His point is that in overthinking, we can begin to rationalize things and we can begin to talk ourselves out of doing what God is calling us to do. Overthinking can be a hindrance of our faith. If the Lord has spoken to your heart, don't think, do. If the Lord is calling you onto the water, whether it's the water of forgiveness or the water of increased love or, or leadership in the church or the missionary field, don't think, do. The winds may be moving about all around us, but God is our constant. Our minds may be racing with all kinds of thoughts, but God is our focal point. He does not change. His character does not shift. He is faithful, he is loving, he will protect us, he will guide us, and he will not send us anywhere alone. Maverick realizes that the mission is too critical and too dangerous to send the aviators out alone. So not only did Maverick simulate the mission for them to show them that it could be done, but he actually leads them on the mission. Maverick is with them, leading them and guiding them through the challenges of the mission. He's speaking to them through their headsets and he's reminding them that they have been chosen for this mission and they are capable of completing the mission safely. And when things become too rough and, and they are attacked by the enemy, Maverick is there and he sacrifices himself for one of his aviators. After the resurrection, Jesus speaks to the disciples and he commissions them. We, we call it the Great Commission. He reminds us in Matthew 28, 20, and surely I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. When he ascends to heaven, he leaves us with the Holy Spirit. He tells us the Holy Spirit will remind us of his truth. It will counsel and guide us. Our mission is critical as well. We have one life to accomplish what God wants us to do and to be who God calls us to be. God gives us instruction through his word and he walks with us through this life. He was with Peter as Peter was walking on the water and he wouldn't let Peter down, even when Peter lost his focus. Even if you take your eyes off of Jesus for a moment or even a season, come back to him. Get focused back on Jesus. Peter started focusing on the wind and the waves. He got scared and started to sink, but he also knew to return back to Jesus. He cried out, Lord, save me. Refocus your eyes back on Jesus. Even if you think you have failed, take confidence in the faith that you do have. Jesus said to Peter, you of little faith, not you of no faith. Ideally, we, we all stay locked into Jesus, but when we look away, don't stay away. Focus back on Jesus. Have your eyes begun to, to stray away? Has your life begun to need refocusing? Today is the day and now is the time to cry out like Peter, Lord, save me. Jesus helps Peter even in his fear and together they get in the boat. Even as a pastor, there are times when my eyes stray away from Jesus. When I recognize this is happening, I need to refocus for myself. For me, refocusing looks like coming back to my fundamentals. I need worship music. I start playing worship music all around me so that even when I can't sit down and read something, I am hearing the word of God swirling all around me. When I find it difficult to pray, I ask others to pray for me in my presence. Like, don't just pray for me out there somewhere. Pray for me with me. And when I don't have the words to pray myself, I pick up a devotional or, or I go to the YouVersion app. I really like that app. And one of my favorite devotional books is called Jesus Calling. It's by a woman named Sarah Young. Speak to me or one of the other pastors if you need help refocusing. Because Jesus is closer than you think. Jesus was able to merely reach out his hand and he's able to touch Peter. Think about it. 
Even when Jesus was at his furthest away, he was in eye shot. They could see him. He was within earshot. They could hear him. When Peter began sinking, the hand of God reached out to save him. Jesus will always be there to save you. He's right there with you, next to you, close enough that you can hear him, close enough that you can see him. You won't drown. When you're out on the water, exercising your maverick faith, stay focused on Jesus. Jesus is right there with you. And if you turn away, turn back. Jesus is just an arm's length away. To have maverick faith, you must focus on Jesus. So to have maverick faith, you have to do what Jesus does, you need to focus on Jesus, and finally, believe more about Jesus. Believe more about Jesus. Look at verses 25 through 27, and then 33. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to the lake, walking on the, excuse me, went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Verse 33, then those who were in the boat worshiped him saying, truly you are the son of God. I don't know if the disciples had ever seen a ghost before, but I've never seen a ghost. Have you? Isn't it interesting that for the disciples and probably for many of us, it seemed more possible for a ghost to be walking on water than Jesus. Perhaps it's fear, or perhaps it's because we don't really believe that God can do anything. God is calling those who want maverick faith to believe more about him. The incarnate God can defy the laws of nature and walk on water. Do you believe it? Peter believed it. You see, Peter gets a bad rap. People say that Peter failed because he lost focus and began to sink and he needed to call out to Jesus, but Peter actually won. He experienced something that no one else did. Peter believed that Jesus could make him walk on water and Peter did walk on water. Peter believed more about Jesus. He believed that Jesus could do something in him that he had not experienced before. And when it's all over, after what Peter did, the disciples worship Jesus and proclaim, truly, you are the son of God. This is the first time the disciples recognize Jesus as the son of God. The disciples are overwhelmed by the power of Jesus, the, the omnipotence of Jesus. In watching Jesus, the disciples began to understand the fullness of Jesus' power and his majesty and his authority. In seeing Jesus at work, they began to believe more about Jesus. What do you believe about Jesus? Is he just a good person to follow? Did he just like do some really cool things in the Bible days, but he doesn't really do any of that stuff now? Or is he the all-powerful guard incarnate? Is he sovereign? Is he holy? Does he have the power to do what we think is impossible? Is he mighty? Does he have the power to forgive your sin? Do you believe that he conquered death? Do you believe that he can give life to those situations in your life that you think are dead? Do you believe that he can mend your heart, that he can empower you to fulfill the dreams he has for you, that he can meet your needs, that he can heal you or someone you love? If you want maverick faith, you have to believe more about Jesus. One of my favorite verses in scripture is Ephesians chapter three, verse 20. God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or imagine according to the power that works in us. This verse reminds us of two things that one, our minds cannot even begin to comprehend all of who God is and all that God can do. But it also says that he wants to do the power through us. 
The disciples didn't believe that Jesus was the one walking on water because they had never seen Jesus do that before and their mind couldn't even comprehend that Jesus could do that. It's fascinating because every step of the way, Jesus was introducing the disciples to something they had never seen before. He was trying to build their maverick faith. They had just seen Jesus feed 5,000 people with two fish and five loaves of bread. They had seen Jesus heal people. They had even seen Jesus calm a stormy sea before. In Matthew chapter 8, we see the story of Jesus and the disciples on a boat. And Jesus is asleep while the storm is taking over. And they wake Jesus up because they think they're going to die. And Jesus gets up and he says, peace, be still. And the storm ceases. And disciples look up and they say, who is this? that even the wind and the waves obey him. They know that Jesus has power over the elements, but because they had never seen Jesus walk on water before, they couldn't possibly believe that it was him now. It's only after seeing it do they proclaim that Jesus is the son of God. They needed to believe more about Jesus. Well, my brothers and my sisters, we have the benefit of the disciples' experiences. We have seen Jesus do what was seemingly impossible. We have seen him heal. We have seen him cast demons out of people. We have seen him restore people to community. We have seen him raise the dead. We have seen him submit to death and resurrect, and not just in the Bible, but in our own lives and in our congregation. We have seen people healed. We have seen people restored. We have seen God mend broken relationships. We have seen God provide. We have seen God intervene and fight our battles. What can't God do? You need to ask yourself that. In fact, you need to ask your neighbor, what can't our God do? What do you need to believe more about God for today? Is your health failing? Is your marriage failing? Are you struggling at home or on your job? Are there broken relationships in your life that need to be mended? Are you or someone you love dealing with addiction or or grief or shame? Do you believe that God can heal you? What experience does God want you to have in him if you would believe more about him? It's just a movie but Maverick's crazy plan worked. He pushed the limits and required the aviators to step out on incredible faith, and it worked. The safe way, the tried and true way, doesn't require faith because we've seen it before. Maverick says, Maverick faith says, God, I've never seen this before, but I believe it can work if it is your will. I believe that you can do what seems impossible. I was in my third year of law school when I heard God call me to ministry. And I remember the people around me, good, godly, Christian people, who told me that's not how God works. God wouldn't put you at this top tier law school and then snatch you out of it to tell you to go into ministry. And that was so confusing to me at the time, but I understand now that people said that because they had never seen God do that before. It didn't make sense to them. But how many of you know that what God asks us to do doesn't always make sense? And God is not bound by any law that says he can't take someone from law school into ministry. Don't tell God what he can't do. And don't tell other people what God can't do. Believe more about God. Maverick faith is about believing that God can actually do the crazy things that seem impossible to you. And I'm not talking about like prosperity gospel and name it and claim it. I'm talking about having the faith to believe that God can do what his promises say he will do. I'm talking about having the faith to pray bold prayers, having the faith to step out on faith and do what God is calling you to do. Just last week, 
Pastor David preached on gender roles and he challenged the women in this congregation. I'm gonna challenge you too, sisters. If God is calling you into a leadership position, step out in maverick faith. And brothers, if God is calling you into a leadership position, step out on maverick faith. What is God pressing on your heart that you keep resisting, that you keep pushing away? And it doesn't have to be this huge thing like changing careers or leaving your family or moving far away. He may be calling you to walk across the street and evangelize to your neighbor. He might be asking you to forgive that person who seems unforgivable or or speak up at that board of education meeting. Let's exercise some maverick faith and step out on the water where God is calling you. Do what he is doing, focus on him, and believe more about you. God is calling us to have a maverick faith because he's a maverick God. He is not bound by laws or by rules. He is consistent, but he is unconventional. No one believed that a virgin would give birth to a baby, but she did. No one believed that God would take the form of a baby, but he did. No one believed that the Son of God would be born in a manger and and raised in Nazareth, but he was. So many still refused to believe when they saw this baby grow up to become a man who who taught in the temple and, and healed the blinds and the lame and cast demons out of people and raised the dead, but he did. They called him a blasphemer because he claimed to be the Son of God and one with God. They called him from Beelzebub because he moves in unconventional ways, healing on the Sabbath and dining with the sinners and identifying with the poor. Some would say his love for us is reckless because he dares to love a group of people who may never love him back. Ours is a maverick God, and he is calling us to have maverick faith. Would you step out of the boat today? Let us pray. God, I thank you that you are a maverick God, that you love us so fiercely, that you blow our minds, not just with who you are, but by what you do. And God, I thank you that you call us out into the deep waters to meet you there. God, I pray for my brothers and my sisters because I believe that on everyone's heart you have placed something that requires maverick faith. It could be having a conversation with someone that they think is challenging. It could be forgiving someone, loving someone, It could be taking a leadership position in the church, asking for a promotion at work. It could mean a change in careers. But God, I thank you that you never call us out where you haven't gone first and you don't leave us there. And Lord, if sometimes our eyes may drift that you're right there to catch us. So God, would you increase our faith and would you give us the courage and the boldness to live out a maverick faith? It's in Christ's name that we pray, amen.